Toyota are back in Formula One and while in real life it may just be a technical partnership with Haas here in the game we've had Toyota back as a full-fledged F1 team here in this 2026 season of F124 career mode guys welcome back to the series this is part number 49 today for the Belgium Grand Prix in season three if you guys did miss the previous one though at Silverstone well the one-off white livery truly made our Mercedes fly lie quite literally over Fernando Alonso's head and we had some chaos with the race leaders taking each other out Leclerc and Lando coming together at the pit lane entry it really was a very chaotic British Grand Prix episode well worth going back to and watching but it means after all of that we're still in a pretty strong position in the drivers championship well over a hundred points now the only driver to cross the 100 point mark as we get into the second portion of the this season and we lead the constructors somehow somehow because only three episodes ago i feel like weren't we we're down in like fifth place so it's been a massive turnaround obviously aided by george russell finally scoring more than just single digit points and that was obviously quite literally last episode with russell getting the race win but that wasn't the only big story coming out of silverstone obviously a williams and toyota podium ock on second place sonoda third and we're seeing a real shake up in the top 10 with williams consistently qualifying well and now actually getting a podium converting that into the race Toyota making a massive step forward with R&D upgrades and a result and of course we already know high tech GP and Oli Behrman have been doing amazing and Red Bull have really fallen from grace they're really struggling to understand their car at this point in the season kind of almost like in real life very nicely so uh, yeah definitely a very different outlook for the season from the start and a different look for this episode as well as last time I just loved the white Mercedes half and half livery so much that I wasn't ready to say goodbye to it so we will be having and running the white Mercedes livery once again here at Spa to be fair in real life that would make a lot of sense because now with the, the the cost cap stuff sometimes it makes more sense just to take the part to another race rather than reprinting the vinyls or repainting parts again so yeah we're going to run it for a second time although I'll revert back to my original uh, fluoro helmet as we grow into a 91 nearly 92 overall rated driver as our focus goes up and uh, at the moment very, very much embodying a driver that's leading the championship like this and controlling things as uh, as all the chaos goes off around us we're just trying to be as consistent as possible through that chaos to keep scoring enough points to keep a healthy margin in the championship and the chaos may continue into the second half of the season because look at that leap and bound from high tech GP they're now no longer for the first time the worst car on paper that goes unfortunately to Audi who have plateaued since the Canadian Grand Prix Toyota continue to bring upgrades so they're as close as they ever have been to the top pack and we finally have one small upgrade thanks to George Russell so that brings us a bit closer to Ferrari McLaren Red Bull stay up top with that margin but with their lack of understanding of their car right now it may not matter much but what will matter I think is Toyota and High Tech GP looking somehow even better, especially High Tech. I mean, that's a massive leap. That's almost as big as the gap from, like, you know, Ferrari, from, from the, basically the entire top Formula A pack there. That's the amount of margin that High Tech GP have gained on everyone. So this is going to be a very intriguing first qualifying session after all of that into the Belgium Grand Prix. High speed straights, heady elevation changes and dramatic corners. What is there not to love about today? It's qualifying day. Here at Spa-Francorchamps. Spa-Francorchamps, a very unique circuit. High speed, but uh, also at the same time, when you need the downforce in the corners, you need compromise also for the straights. That's why we also see in real life, you know, sometimes teams bringing, uh, just as they do to Monza, different rear wings to cope with that unique challenge. So whether the high-tech GP upgrades are going to be in favor of that or they've just added bulk of downforce to the car. 
uh, you know, remains to be seen if that's going to help them out. And what can Toyota do as well as we now go through for our first flying lap? And uh, it's, oh, well, I thought it was an okay lap, but we come across the line. Only P15 in company of Lewis Hamilton in the struggling Red Bull Ford bit behind Logan Sargent in the high-tech GP car. So very much some time needed to be gained here. And Leclerc goes quick as of all. So again, consistent as ever at the front, along with Lando Norris, I'm sure, as uh, we go yellow first sector, really wringing the neck out of the car to try and gain three tenths in the middle sector. But we probably need more than that as we're down to P19. How has this ended up being a disaster for us? as we're now only going to gain four tenths of a second. What is that going to get us? From P19 to P12, we finish outside the top 10. What on earth has gone on? We've come from a back-to-back -back Mercedes victory to now Russell only manages P7. We're down in P12. And, well, Leclerc and Lando... Surprise, surprise, they're there again, one and two. They they really are the most consistent men. It was quite unfortunate for either of them. They just took each other out last episode. Otherwise, it may be a very different story going into this one. But uh, Red Bull have an absolute shocker, 17 and 18, as they continue to just be baffled by their own car. Williams continue their qualifying form, and Toyota now pick up momentum from Sonoda's podium to finish P4 for tomorrow's race. High-tech GP also look pretty good. Audi maybe taking a step back, obviously, relative to everyone else because no longer can Bottas manage a top 10 finish in qualifying, and both high-tech GP cars are in the top 10. The only thing that seems certain right now is Lando and Charles' qualifying form. Everything else, you can just chuck out the form book because it's really hard to tell what what it's going to be like in the race and going from track to track and that is why consistency is so important that's why p12 is such a disappointing result we're gonna to have to work very hard in the race to come back for this one let's go to the grid welcome to this visit to the ardennes countryside spa francorchamps hosted its first grand prix back in 1925 and this historic track is loved by drivers and fans alike and us here in the commentary box too. So it's a warm welcome from the Belgian Grand Prix. So here we are once again, ready to go racing through the Ardennes forest. 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there's no place quite like it. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position, and it's Esteban Ocon in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Sonoda, Sainz, Russell, Behrman, Perez, Sargent, Joe, Leclerc, and Mercedes, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Ricardo, Verstappen, Hamilton, Stroll, and Nico Hülkenberg rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. And alongside me today, former Formula One driver and former world champion too. See, told you I'd give you a big intro. Anthony Davidson, hello. Now, sadly, things didn't work out for them last time. It was a bad race. Question is, though, can they recover today? Yes, they can, Crofty. You've got to put it behind you. Whatever happened last time, I was always told as a driver, park it, forget about it. Obviously, feel the pain when it happens, but then you can't dwell on it and carry that through to the next race. So put it behind you and just crack on with this race coming your way now. So we're actually starting one place higher than P12, thanks to a grip penalty for someone. And we've got familiar company on the left-hand side of us in the form of Leclerc, who takes a grid penalty for engine components. I assume still off the back of that Austrian Grand Prix DNF that he suffered, um, you know, still having to manage parts there. And that maybe gives Lando an easier shot at walking away with this Grand Prix. We're going to have to see, but you can very much see that I've learned from on my mistake 
from last episode. We're just gonna gonna ignore the peer pressure around us, and we're gonna start okay, on the medium. The soft tire, it just seems very useless for us specifically. You know, the tire temps on this Mercedes car, it's an absolute diva. It's just too much to handle. So we start on the mediums as we go to five red lights for the Belgium Grand Prix, and a comeback and a half needed today with a very competitive top 10. It's not been the best start, but obviously we're on the medium, so wasn't expecting to jump any soft tire runners, but now side by side with another medium tire runner of Joe Grant Yu in the Audi. We stay ahead of Fernando Alonso, who is suffering from an Aston Martin that is uh, been a lot slower for him since his win at the Spanish Grand Prix. It seems uh, quite, quite for quite a few teams, it's a very up and down yo-yo sort of performance season as we all try to understand our 2026 machines here in season three as we make the move on the Audi to get P10 and slot into the top 10 for the first time. And meanwhile, look at the top, Lando Norris over a second ahead of Yuki Tsunoda. The Toyota is in second place. Those further upgrades helping the, him even more so. I say him because it's really just him because his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, look at the ladder there, all the way down in P16. So it, yes, this is amazing with Toyota, but this is also more maybe just Yuki Tsunoda absolutely cooking in the series at the moment. Momentum from the podium in Silverstone. And he's here again. Sainz P4, the lead Ferrari. Honestly, that Ferrari really needs to be Leclerc in terms of his championship hopes. I feel like I jinxed Leclerc, honestly, because he was doing so well leading the championship up until the Spanish Grand Prix. And I noted that and praised him for it. And then ever since then, Austria, engine failure, Silverstone, crash with Lando. Things have gone wrong. Maybe a long-term commentator's curse for me, my bad, but uh, I was honestly just trying to praise him because he was doing an excellent job up until that point of the season as we now watch him overtake Sargent. We're going to try and follow him through. It's uh, actually quite amazing that we're having to properly fight Logan Sargent here at this point in this game. You know, he's not even in F1 anymore in real life, but here in this alternative F1 universe of ours in the career mode series, Sargent doing actually pretty damn well in the high-tech GP to be in P10. His teammate, Oli Behrman, flying high in P7. Once again, very much impressing in his rookie debut season. As we now cut on to lap three, what am I seeing? Yuki Tsunoda into the lead of the Belgium Grand Prix. Toyota leads in Formula One. What is going on? What is it with Yuki and the uh, Spa in F1 games? Because remember, in our F1 manager series, like, like last year, Sonoda won the Belgium Grand Prix in a Williams in that F1 manager series last year. It, it's just a weird thing with him in, in Spa, it seems, in just multiple different F1 games. Meanwhile, it's absolute pain for Verstappen. P18, Hamilton, last place. What? is actually going on with Red Bull Ford. For the last four episodes, their car has been woeful. Uh, they've either made upgrades that have just made the car slower, or they're really in a rut to understand the car setup. And the same for Ricardo, because he's down in P16, and his teammate is leading the race. Um, yeah, big discrepancies between teammates this season so far and big discrepancies between performances from the start of the season to this point in the season. But this fight right here is quite familiar from the get-go. Myself versus Leclerc, we've been battling since the first race where we stole that race win in the final corner of the last lap of the opening round. Side by side with the Ferrari who does really well to keep it through on the inside. He's on the soft compound obviously, so at this point maybe he's still got that overwhelming grip but we are trying our darnest to get on the inside and get this overtake. Meanwhile, we see Russell really aggressively shoving Perez off the racing line as we look to have a little half look on Ollie Behrman, but he shuts the door. This is going to be difficult. Clearly, our Mercedes car is not working as well around here compared to Silverstone. Russell, you look at the minimap. He's a massive bottleneck here. There's a huge gap then to the top four of Sainz, Ocon, uh, Sonoda and Norris. So Russell really holding all of us up in the same way I, I was holding people up at Silverstone, remember, uh, on the hard compound as we overtake Behrman now and watch Perez make the move. Can we make a double pass? Opportunistic? No. Locking up. We were far too greedy. We already made one overtake on Behrman. I thought we could make a double overtake 
whilst Russell and Perez were too busy, you know, squabbling with each other. But we just went far too late on the brakes, locked the front tyre, and the better option there was to bail out across the runoff area. But it means we're now down two positions. We have to re-overtake Logan Sargent on the inside. Bloody hell, Logan! Give us the rim, mate. We were there on the inside. He turned in like we weren't even there. We made a bit of contact. We've somehow held it through. That could have been a disaster class. We could have been spun out there on the curb and by the high-tech GP car. But we live to fight for another day in P8. But, um, yeah, things aren't looking great. I think maximum... Well, honestly, maybe maximum we're hoping for in this race is P5. Because the gap is seven seconds to the top four. Like, that's unbelievably big. Um, and it seems to be where our, our pace is, you know, looking at Russell's car bottlenecking everything. As we see, what a weird sight this is. The Toyota leading with a two-second margin. What on earth have Toyota cooked up with those upgrades? And what is Sonoda eaten in his porridge this morning? Ocon's in second auto, by the way. So what happened to Lando? The McLaren was on pole position, and now all of a sudden, in race pace terms in the first stint, he He's behind the Williams as well. So maybe the McLaren really not liking its soft compound anymore as we make quick work of Behrman to get back into P7. And now looking to re-engage with the fight with Perez versus Russell. And once again, we see Perez going for the move on the inside. This time we're going to be nice and patient, not be too eager to make the pass. Trying to find a good line to cut through here on the inside. Perez, oh my God, he shut the door and he's absolutely absolutely blocked us and now we have to fight Russell as we squeeze him he gets the elbow out Russell having won the last race has now got a bit of a backbone in the season it would seem and he's a bit adamant of staying ahead of us but we have the overwhelming pace you've got to say now at this point he was holding all of us up and now we're ahead but wow Perez that was, the, that, that was the definition of boxed in. Couldn't go anywhere and uh, invited us back in with a fight with our own teammate. As we see Loris trailing the Williams. And to be honest, science is actually very close. So, yeah, the McLaren at this point is really not liking its soft tyres as we gain on Perez, who's on mediums and has looked a bit punchier, at least with the overtakes. Obviously, I know he's down here in P5 compared to his teammate, but... Uh, Perez opting for a different tyre and maybe finding a bit more pace because both of us are pulled away from, well, Behrman. Behrman's overtaken Russell, just showing how slow Russell was. Behrman's overtaken him in the high-tech car as Norris and Ocon now pit. Sainz and Sonoda continue on, to my surprise. They're both on softs. That is a very long way to go. And even more to my surprise, on lap 10, Sainz is in. What are Toyota doing? Sonoda is still out there. Like, it, okay, fair enough. He was two seconds ahead at, at one point. So maybe he just has that much pace. But are Toyota maybe throwing this away? I feel like that's a mistake by them. Uh, you know, obviously, they're not used to being up here at the top of Formula 1. You know, they haven't been in F1 for ages. And obviously, this team used to be V-Carb. And they're very much not used to being at the top. And look at that. Sonoda's come in now. It's a 1-2 for Merck. It's a 1-2 for us. But, of course, myself and Russell are on the mediums going long. But Sonoda's now behind Ocon and Norris. They've just thrown away that lead. Ricardo is up in third place. He's yet to pit. Are Toyota trying to play a game by making Ricardo hold up Lando and Ocon? Well, if they're trying that, it's not working. The McLaren fires past and he's up into third. And that will be a net P1 once myself and Russell make our pit stops. And Sonoda is a net P3 because Ocon will be second. Um, so they've thrown away the race lead. And what's happened to Behrman? He's down in P13. He's five positions back from his teammate, Logan Sargent. Maybe they double stacked, I think. Uh, whatever the case, that pit stop window has been awful for some people and great for others. Been great for Lando and Ocon. Awful for Sonoda. Awful for Behrman. And, uh, and really great for Sargent because now he's the lead high-tech car. And he's, uh, he's, uh, he's within one second of Perez even. So, yeah, really good pit stop window for Logan Sargent and uh, well for us myself and Russell one of the few people on mediums we're just trying to go as long as we can and the thing is actually I didn't want to go this long but I wasn't sure when Russell was pitting and I just thought back to Silverstone where we pit so early for hards 
and by the end of the race, the hard tyres even weren't working for us, so I wanted to go longer. The problem is, I couldn't go any longer than this. I had to come in, and unfortunately, of course, Russell's coming in as well. So it's a double stack, which usually never works on the Codemasters F1 games, and it definitely doesn't work when there's an issue on the front right. Five-second pit stop. Brilliant Mercedes, brilliant double stack. And just when you didn't need a pit stop issue, there is one. Five seconds, so Russell is going to be absolutely no-scoped out of this race. He's, da he's down in PE17. Uh, wow, great. Well, RIP Russell, RIP any momentum you had as an AI driver. So Lando now leads by nearly four seconds. Sonoda is back up to second or fighting for second place. We're out in P7. We've come up behind Sargent, behind Perez, but we're on fresher, hard tyres. But uh, Russell, well, he's all the way back where Red Bull are. And that's how you know it's been an awful pit stop window for him because Red Bull have been nowhere this entire race. So, uh, yeah, obviously partly maybe my fault making the double stack happen. But obviously I, I still can't believe there's no proper feature in this game to just tell your teammate not to pit or to tell the team, can you not double stack us? Or, or just a better mechanic for double stacking that actually works. Uh, and then obviously obviously the AI issue happened with the pit stop mistake, which is fair enough. That, that could happen in real life. And uh, it has happened to us as we now have to make a re-overtaking pass on Sergio Perez going for the double move maybe with DRS wide open from the right to the left. We get a double pass on the same straight up into P5. And now we look to pull away as Max Verstappen his day goes from bad to worse. It's an engine failure. Mate, no power, no power. Yeah, mode one. Mate, can I not just go out of care if this engine blows up? Mate, I okay. Could. Uh, stop the car, please, on track, Max. Stop the car, please. What a f***ing chug all the f***ing time with this s***, honestly. Ah. Red Bull Ford season just seems to be going from a new low to a new low every episode. They, they, they almost need something to reinvigorate themselves. They need a shot in the arm, some injection of life, a big upgrade or something. I don't know, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a real puzzler as Lando Norris leads now by over four seconds, dominating this Belgian Grand Prix now, showing the true pace of the McLaren when tyre wear maybe on the softs is not a factor. But meanwhile, Sonoda... He went really long on the softs, and that was all because he wanted to go on the mediums for the second stint. The rest of us, all on hards, but Toyota have pulled off a medium tyre for the uh, second stint. So although they may have lost first place, maybe they were looking at the bigger picture. Maybe they thought, we're never going to win the race, but can we try and at least attack sign to knock on for the next best thing, which is second place on the podium? Because uh, Sonoda, although he was annoyed by Ocon initially, by lap 19, he's set the fast up the Grand Prix, and he's, look at the minimap, right on the back of the Ferrari and Ocon is actually the one that's fallen away into our clutches. I thought maybe there was a chance to catch Sonoda when his medium tyres ran out but to my surprise Ocon's actually just really struggling on his hards and we have just pushed and pushed and leaned on this hard that has got good pace and now we're here looking for the move on Esteban Ocon, who's not going to give us any room to work with on the left. We have to dip a tyre into the grass as we commit to the inside. But we get up into P4 to try and limit the damage, get as many points in this race as we can, because it looks all of a certainty that Lando Norris is going to win this race. So that's going to be his second win of the season. He's going to be the only other driver to win multiple races in this season, along with me and with others floundering you know Leclerc out the points Sonoda as he gets up into second maybe but uh, you know no, no, Alonso down in P9 Verstappen out this race Hamilton P19 Russell P18 uh, Lando is the only one left that is up here getting a win and so he will definitely be up in second place in the drivers championship and the nearest challenger to us which will be very interesting if it keeps going like that you know facing off against our old teammate you know, he was the season one champion. I was the season two champion. It would be, you know, a fitting of a, of a dramatic trilogy if then we both had to fight each other in different cars for the second world championship of our careers as uh, Sonoda legit gets in second place. 
I don't know how Toyota have pulled that off. A one-stop on soft to medium. Uh, but they've done really well. They saw the bigger picture. They were never going to topple Lando and McLaren on the hard compound. The second stint, he has been flying and dominating this entire thing. Lando Norris comes through for his second win of the season. But Toyota absolutely cooking. They get a second podium in two races. And it's second place this time. One better. Does that mean mean you know looking at the pattern does that mean they're going to win the next race who knows we come across the line p4 okay, it's a very good up, strong recovery for us very strong recovery uh whilst others floundered apart from lando norris it's it, it might be game on it might be game on with our old teammates for the championship now let's see it's uh, going to be a very interesting half of the season here's the checkered flag and our winner has landed it's lando norris for victory they led from lights out to the flag at the end and their race victory was never in doubt, was it? Brilliant stuff by them. A very dominant second stint after Toyota looked so strong in the first one, but uh, ultimately McLaren have the pace. It's a great day in the office for Logan Sargent, by the way. I want to shout him out. Seventh place in the high-tech GP car. Really amazing result for him. But yeah, look at that. Lando now, 25 points off us. Still quite a big margin, but he is now the nearest man to us in the championship. Sonoda, after two brilliant races, jumps up into the top 10 in the championship and Toyota now a P7 in the constructors seven points between ourselves and McLaren so it's game on not only between maybe myself and Lando but McLaren trying to chase us down but look at the close points gap 43 Toyota 42 Haas 38 high-tech GP 37 Audi it's an incredible fight for the bottom four positions in this championship as well. So in, in different ways at the top and the bottom of this season, things are heating up for this second half of the season. Guys, if you have enjoyed this one, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.